All right, here, folks. So at this point, we've talked all about solving of polynomials. This is a process that ideally we should be fairly comfortable with and be able to do like the various steps of the solving problem and use the various little theorems and tools to kind of figure out things about what it is that we're trying to do. Um, we'll probably do a little bit, one more day of kind of practice on that next week, but that's really all I have budgeted for this. Um, there is one other topic though in this chapter that I wanna talk about. So today, what we're going to talk about is how to build a polynomial from a description. So I'm going to describe to you like some attributes that we want our polynomial to have, and then you're going to figure out how to make such a polynomial. Okay? So for example, maybe we want a polynomial with integer coefficients um, and let's say the zeros of negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, and 1 plus the square root 2. And then let's say we want minimum degree. Okay. So when we say integer coefficients, the polynomial that we're going to make has to obey the irrational conjugates theorem and complex conjugates theorem. We're going to use, if these are going to be zeros for our function, or roots for a polynomial, or solutions to our equation, or x-intercepts, or whatever, uh, we have to use the factor remainder theorem. What's your question? Want, yeah. Obey. Okay. Sorry about my penmanship. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> and then the last one, a minimum degree, is I just don't want to include any extra factors that I didn't need to make sure I met the first two criteria. So 
So that's going to be kind of the idea here, how we're going to approach this. So I'm always going to start here with my list of zeros. I've gone ahead and just listed my zeros as x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2, and x equals 1 plus the square root of 2. Grace? Factors? Irrational conjugates theorem? complex conjugates given. And we'll review what those are and how we're going to use them in a moment when we get to worrying about it. So I want to be able to turn these x-intercepts or these zeros or these solutions into factors, right? That's what we're trying to do in this second step. So this is really easy. All I'm going to do is, for example, add 2 to both sides to get this equal to 0. So for the first three, that's pretty trivial, right? Now, for this one, I'm going to basically do the same thing, but I'm going to write it this way is I'm going to treat that 1 plus the square root of 2 as kind of one big thing. And I'm just going to subtract that whole thing from both sides to get it equal to 0. Any question about what I've done so far? So far, so good? Okay. Now I'm going to take each one of these equations and multiply them together. So I'm going to multiply the left-hand sides together, and then I'm going to multiply the right-hand sides together. The nice part is when I multiply the right-hand sides together, what do I get? Just zero, because they were all equal to zero, right? So now we're done with that row. What we have here is a polynomial that if I set it equal to zero, I'm going to get those same solutions that I needed, right? Everybody's okay with that? The second thing I'm going to worry about is making sure I have integer coefficients. So the only time I have to worry about this is if I have an irrational zero or an imaginary zero given. Do I have either of those here? This is irrational, so I have to worry about obeying the irrational conjugates theorem. What the irrational conjugates theorem says is if I have a polynomial with integer coefficients, then if I have one integer, or then integer, I'm sorry, let me restart again. If I have a polynomial with integer coefficients, then any irrational solutions come in conjugate pairs. So I know that also included on this list needs to be the conjugate to 1 plus the square root of 2. What is the conjugate to 1 plus the square root of 2? 
uh, not negative 1. It's going to be 1 minus the square root of 2. So the conjugate is the same thing, just a different, the opposite sign in front of the irrational part, which in this case is the square root part. So that one should also be on my list. So just like I did before, I'm going to set that equal to 0. And then I'm going to multiply these two polynomials together. I'm going to write that as x plus 2 cubed. Everybody's OK with that, I hope. Bless you. You're welcome. So far, so good. That takes care of this piece. Because we didn't do anything extra, we're done with that piece. Now, the only thing that I would require you guys still to do is to multiply some of these factors out so that we have only integer coefficients in our factor. So the only factors that don't have integer coefficients are these ones, right? Yes, Grace? We didn't write it twice. Those are two different things. Those are the only parts without integer coefficients, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to FOIL this out. So x times x is x squared. Then I'm going to have minus x times 1 minus square root 2. And then I'm going to have minus x times 1 plus square root 2. And then I'm going to have plus... 1 plus square root 2 times 1 minus square root 2. So all I did was FOIL that out. And I just treated the 1 plus square root 2 and 1 minus square root 2 as just like one chunk, one big thing. Right? Can you see the FOIL now? And the reason I did that is to avoid having to draw a grid, where ordinarily if I have three things in my polynomial, I would draw a grid. But this ends up being a rather convenient way of thinking about things. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute my negative x's through. And then I have to worry about this. How am I going to multiply this out? So I still have that last term to deal with, right? How am I going to multiply 1 plus square root of 2 times 1 minus square root of 2? Mm -hmm. 
No. <laughs> so you would foil that piece out, right? But look carefully at that multiplication problem, because this is actually going to be a special case of foiling. What does this actually look like? It looks like the difference of two squares, right? Where I have like something plus something, something minus something, right? Where I have something, right? We can see how it's kind of like a difference of two squares there. So I'm gonna use that because it makes the multiplication a little bit easier. Because I don't have to foil with it. Now let's combine some like terms. What do you notice? I have an x, a positive x squared of 2, and I have a negative x squared of 2. When I add those together, I get 0. <coughs> Um, 1 squared is just 1. The square root of 2 squared is 2. And then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So when I combine negative x and negative x, I get negative 2x, and then I have my negative 1. And this is where we'll stop. If you were in the honors class, you would multiply this whole thing out, and it'd be a nightmare. But we're just going to multiply enough out so that we have all integer coefficients and in things. Should we do another? So let's try to write a polynomial that has these characteristics. We have integer coefficients. We have the zeros 1, 2, square root 3, 1 plus 2i, and minus 3i. We want minimum degree, and we want a leading coefficient that's equal to 3. So just like before, we're going to start here.
and what I want to do is I want to transform these zeros into factors. So that's easy enough. I'll subtract 1 from both sides. I'll subtract 2 from both sides. I'll subtract the square root of 3 from both sides. I'll subtract 1 plus 2i from both sides. And then I'll add 3i to both sides. All I'm doing is I'm taking these solutions and turning them into factors. So that's what we're doing by getting them back equal to zero. So then we can multiply each of these equations together and we'll be left with a polynomial that has those solutions. Is that okay with that, Elena? So next thing, let's worry about this. So if I want integer coefficients, because this is one of my zeros, what other zero needs to be there? So the square root of 3 is one of my zeros. What other zero needs to be on my list? Very good. I need to need its conjugate, which is negative square root 3. Because 1 plus 2i is on my list, what other 0 needs to be on my list? one minus 2i. And because negative 3i is on my list, what other 0 needs to be on my list? Positive 3i. So I was on doing this in green. Positive 3i. Good. So now I'm going to take each of these zeros and convert them into factors. So I'll add square root of 3 from both, to both sides. I'll subtract 1 minus 2i from both sides. And then I'll subtract 3i from both sides. So far, so good. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply all of these things together. So I'm going to have an x minus 1 times an x minus 2 times an x minus square root 3 times an x minus 1 plus 2i times an x plus 3i times an x plus square root 3 times an x minus 1 minus 2i and then times an x minus 3i. Okay. Now let's make sure that we have integer coefficients. The way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply some of these factors together so that I end up with a polynomial with integer coefficients. 
because right now we have a bunch of things that don't have integer coefficients. Everybody okay there? Okay. So what should I be multiplying to x minus the square root of 3? Which other factor am I going to multiply with that one? Excellent. Okay. So what should I multiply with x minus 1 plus 2i? x minus 1 minus 2i. And then what one should I multiply with x plus 3i? x minus 3i. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the factors that have conjugate pairs together. That's going to be my plan. So that's the multiplication that I'm about to do. Notice those first two I'm not doing anything to because they still have integer coefficients. They're just along for the ride, the x minus 1, the x minus 2. Nothing's going to happen to those guys. They're just going to stay the way they are. Everybody so far so good. So let's look at the x minus square root of 3 and x plus square root of 3. How would I multiply those out? So you could FOIL those out. Do you notice there's also the shortcut available here? This is a difference of two squares also, right? That's the way I'm going to think about it because it's a little bit quicker. So if you foiled, you'd end up with the same thing, but you'd have a little bit of simplifying to do before you got there. We'll do the same thing here. Okay, with that, and now I'm going to, can I use a difference of two squares on this stuff in the blue? No, not at this stage. Here we actually just have to FOIL. So x times x is x squared. Then I have x times negative 1 minus 2i. Right, negative x, 1 minus 2i. And then I have negative 1 plus 2i times x, so I'll write minus x, 1 plus 2i. And then I have negative 1 plus 2i times negative 1 minus 2i. Two negatives give me a positive. I have 1 plus 2i times 1 minus 2i. Everybody okay with how I foiled things out there? All right, so let's simplify some things down here a little bit. What's the square root of 3 squared give us?
uh, the square root of 3 squared is the square root of 9 or just 3. The way I like to think about it is just that the squared cancels the square root. And you're left with the 3. So far, so good there. Okay. How about uh, what's 3i squared give us? Gives us 9i squared. But remember, what is i squared equal to? Negative 1. So really, what does this simplify down to? x squared plus 9. Good. So far, so good. Now we just have this last one here at the end. So I'll start by distributing the x through. And then distribute that x through. And then for this last piece, I'd have to FOIL this, or here is where I can use the difference of two squares again, if you choose to do that. You could FOIL it out also, but I'm going to use the difference of two squares. So right away I see I have a positive 2ix and a negative 2ix. Those add to give me 0. I can combine the negative x and the negative x to get negative 2x. Then I have 1 plus a negative. And then what does 2i squared give us? That's 4i squared, and remember i squared is really negative 1, so what do I get then? I get 5. Right? I get 1 minus a negative 4, which is the 5. Question so far. Tom. Can you give us one this long or not? Uh, I mean, maybe. I haven't written the test yet. Okay. Annalise? This is the easy way. We still have a little bit more, though, for this problem because it's not done. And we're not even looking at multiplying out of the problem. Yeah. So we still have one more thing to worry about. We want a leading coefficient of 1. What is the leading coefficient going to be for this polynomial? What is, I'm sorry, we want a leading co coefficient of 3. We want a leading coefficient of 3. What is the leading coefficient for this polynomial going to be? It's going to be 1. What did you say? Yep, that's it. So all I did was stick a 3 out front. Because that's going to give us a leading coefficient of 3. 
That's the end for this one. Juan. Okay. That's it. You're you're done. Why would you do, what do you mean distribute the three? Yeah. Yep. We're writing a polynomial from a description. Yep. Of course. <laughs> So here we want a polynomial with integer coefficients. Zeros of 1, 2, negative 3, i, and square root 3. We want a leading coefficient of negative 2 and no constant term. So let's start here. So let's simplify this process here a little bit by not writing as much down. So what factor am I going to get from the 0 of 1? x minus 1. Everybody's OK there? What factor am I going to write for 2? x minus 2. What factor am I going to write for negative 3? x plus 3. What factor am I going to write for i? x minus i. Because i is imaginary, what other factor needs to be on this list? Minus i. So I also need the factor x plus i. Is everybody okay so far with what I've done? Okay. What do I get for square root of 3? x minus the square root of 3. Because square root of 3 is irrational, what else needs to be on my list? minus square root of 3. So what other factor needs to be down here? x plus square root of 3. So we took care of those two here in one step without writing as much down. Is everybody okay with what I did when I didn't write as much down? Okay. So I need to multiply my conjugate pairs together. Notice in both of these two cases, I can do this with the difference of two squares. So what do I get when I use the difference of two squares on x minus i and x plus i? I get x squared minus i squared. And what do I get when I do the difference of two squares on x minus square root of 3 and x plus the square root of 3? x squared minus square root 3 squared.
So notice we skipped a bunch of steps here that I'd been writing down.